going to start recording and it's call great. the meeting to order. I think she's played at the Flynn. I'm oh, sorry. Thank you all for being here. Um, hi, I'm Jody Emerson, Superintendent Director of the Central Vermont Career Center School District. And it looks like we have our board, we have our business manager, Michelle, we have our, our minutes taker, Stephanie Olson, and we have one of our instructors, Carl Madison, here. And then on screen, I see four board members, and then I have three here in the room with me. So Scott, Jim, Jason, Guy, thank you all for joining online, and Alice, Lyman, and Jana, thanks for being here. Our first order of business today, we're I got it. Yeah. 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 We can also turn on the overhead lights when it starts getting darker. We get to um, reorganize this oh, that's great. group. Yeah, and so, do I have a nomination? Oh, first off, has everyone, and I guess by everyone, I mean Alice and Scott, who are new back. Oh, and Josh, welcome aboard. Um, have you all? completed your oath of allegiance and and that with the city clerk prior to getting here because you've probably done it for your setting boards yes awesome thank you so do I have a motion for board chair go no please <laughs> I move that Alice be the our board chair Alice Farrell for our board chair okay okay so Jana moves that Alice be the board chair Lyman seconded are there any other nominations for board chair or any other interested parties? Alice, are you interested? Yes. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> Hearing none, is there any discussion? All right. All those in favor say aye or raise your hand. Aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? That motion car is carried and Turn it over okay. to you, Alice. All right. Well, thank you all. Um, our next order of business is to elect a vice chair um, who would serve in the capacity in case the chair is not able to be at a meeting or at um, a board meeting. Oh. Guy, has this guy, has, what have you got? I'd like to nominate Lyman Castle as vice chair based on his experience and excellent job the last couple of years. <laughs> second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any other nominations? All those in favor of Lyman Castle being the board vice chair, please say aye. 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 Any one not in favor? Nope. Motion carries. <laughs> Motion carries. Lyman Castle is our vice chair. And then we need a board clerk. Um, and for the most part, Stephanie Olson does our minutes. And so the board clerk is simply the person who helps us to know who got you out of executive session and any vote that happens after that uh, once Stephanie's gone home for the night. Do we have any volunteers? Guy has his A hand. guy? Uh, I'd like to nominate Jana. <laughs> All right. I can do that. I can manage that. <laughs> okay. If it's second. Second. Have a second. Oh. All right. We have a motion and a second <laughs> for Jenna Osman as, as board clerk. All those, uh, any discussion? No. All those in favor? Say aye. Aye. Okay. Anyone opposed? Seeing no opposition, motion carries. It's like the rule was you had to be in the room? Yes. <laughs> That's well, right. He was good. He's quick on the nomination <laughs> before okay. anything can happen. Now, um, <laughs> our regular board meetings are? So in the past uh, year, our regular board meetings were the second Monday of every month from 6 to 8. Um, I think when we think about that for moving forward, if we want to keep that, that's fine, except for April 8th, which is the eclipse day. Okay. Okay. We can do that. Any other suggestions for meeting days, Guy? Does that 
does that meet with the new board members? Because I don't know what what days your your boards meet. So uh, that's important. No, we're it should because Barry's we've good. Been, we've been doing it at this yeah. date, so it should conform with what other schools are doing unless they've changed it. Right. Okay, so the second Monday. Yeah. The reason I asked is I didn't know in reorganization whether people had changed or not. So, all right. So the second Monday of the month, except for April 8th, and we'll figure out um, what we're going to be doing on April 8th, how we'll handle that. All righty. Board retreat date. Do we have a retreat date? Do we do a retreat? Uh, I believe we've done it in June. Okay. Previously, so... We just start one of our June meetings, our June meeting early, not one of, but okay. our June meeting early. Well, okay. Did we do that? And then we did. We and then we pizza. took. And then we took July off. off. Yeah. Okay. Right. So the June meeting. So what date is that? Do we need to? All right. June tenth. Okay. Great. And then we start at what time then? Four. 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 All right. All right. So June tenth at four p.m. Um, scheduled for retreat. Committee assignments. We have finance, facilities, policy, program quality, and negotiations. Um, I'm going to just skip to the bottom here if I made negotiations. Do we have negotiations this year at all? Uh, they will likely move to start for negotiations because the current contract takes us through this year and all of next, but they'll be negotiating for FY25. So probably start in November. November. Okay. So negotiations committee will begin in November. 2024. Now, do we do this voluntarily? Guy, you have something? Yeah, I'll, I'll volunteer to be on negotiations and, and volunteer to get them done by January. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Guy is on negotiations. Uh, um, question? Yes, sir. Are we going to... It sounds like Jason's in this. Oh, I'm sorry, Jason. No, it's all right. I'll volunteer for that committee. Great. Now, what that was it that you were volunteering for? Negotiations. <laughs> negotiations. Okay. They were previously last year. on negotiations. Okay. And then you're automatically on negotiations. <laughs> was, isn't that right? No. No? No. Oh, I no. thought it was the board chair. <laughs> <laughs> that might have happened to Jill, but. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be shy. It's a fun time. <laughs> All right. Um, Can I ask a question? Sure, sir. Um, the policy committee is always, we've done it as the full board and not had a committee. Are we right. still comfortable with doing that that way? One of the things that we, the previous board had agreed to was that we were hiring the VSBA to do a, a policy review this year. And so once they're done with that, I, I still think this full board could do the work. Yeah. Okay. Mm. When will, do you know when the VSBA will approximately have their report done? No. no I'm okay. going to have to reach back out to floor and okay. find out. How. Okay. All right. So, so that takes care of policy. And for our new members, um, we haven't done an extra meeting for policy. It's been in the board meeting itself. And it's worked out fine. It's been fine. Okay. Scott has his hand up. Um, who? Scott. Yeah, I'm sorry if I missed this, but um, what are the standing committees and um, how many, what, what has been the practice in terms of number of committees that, that board members are on and number of board members on each committee? That was really confusing, sorry. No, you can you can handle that. Okay, so we have a finance committee, a facilities committee, a program quality committee, and negotiations. Finance facilities and program quality meet once monthly. Um, in the past, finance and facilities have both met on the first Tuesday of the month, and program quality has met right before this board meeting previously. 
negotiations is as needed. And we have three members on each. We can have more, but not less. We were two for a long time. Okay. okay. I'd like I'd like to stay on the program quality if possible. Okay. Yeah, I, I would also like to stay on the program quality. Well, I'm Jana. And I was going to volunteer for program quality, but if someone else would like to do that. I could either do program quality or finance easily. Um, would you be would you be comfortable on the finance committee, Scott? Okay, very good. Great. We'll put Scott on there. I'll stay on that finance committee. Okay. Was that Jim who spoke? Yeah, that was Jim. Okay, I'm going to get everybody's okay. Um so we've got so program is full. Um, and we have Mike Bishop is not online, I don't think, from the Harwood district. And then we have um, one person who will need to be appointed from from Washington Central at large. Okay. So um, what we have left then here is one person on finance, all three on facilities, and one more for negotiations. One more for, more for negotiations. Yes. I can uh, I can volunteer for facilities. Okay. Thank you, Joshua. And when does that meet again? I'm sorry. We get to decide that today, but it has been oh, meeting right. okay. the set, the first Tuesday of each month. We have finance. We used to have finance at four and facilities at five. Um, right. Facilities is taking on a really big project. Hopefully, Flora warned you of that. And so, I, yeah, there may be additional meetings with the architects. It sounds like a really exciting project, so I'm interested. Okay. Great. All right. So we Can need. I have a suggestion? Yes. Could people just say what the, who they what board? What they committee represent? they were? Oh, okay. Where oh. they come from? Because I don't know. Oh, okay. So the next the next time around, if you're speaking, um, introduce what um, regular education district board you are from, and that way we can recognize you for your home district and i am my name's, my name's jim and i'm from the harwood union district <laughs> <laughs> i'm alice farrell and i um, represent the barry unified union school board right, i'm jana osman and i represent twinfield I'm Joshua Sevitz, and I'm coming from Washington County. Scott Lewins. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Scott, please. Go ahead. Go ahead, Scott. He froze. He froze him, guys. Oh, he's frozen. Yeah. Ooh, what power I have. Uh, <laughs> i I'm the at-large member at the new USD board, and I would also like to volunteer for facilities again. Okay, Guy, we'll put Guy on. Scott, you want to try again? It froze up a little. Yeah, I think my kids are eating up all my bandwidth. Um, Scott Lewins, Montpelier Roxbury School District. Okay. And I'm Lyman Castle. I'm uh, the at-large member from uh, Montpelier Roxbury. Okay, so I think I'm live. Jason Monaco. I'm from the Cabot School. Hmm. All right. You meet Monday. Next. Week. Yeah, next Monday. So I, I most likely will get reappointed unless somebody else wants to do it. But I assume it's going to be good. We're counting on you, Jason. Jason. Yep. That's that's my uh, that's what I want to do. So. We'll, we'll have to rally at headwaters when you win. Yeah. Now, um, I think we have everybody in the room on at least one committee. Yeah. So do we just continue for the next um, talk, talk to the folks who aren't here yeah. and see what they would want to do. 
Okay, so um, the next thing we have to talk about is the district spokesperson. And usually the district spokesperson is the superintendent of schools and or the board chair. Um, does that meet with everyone's approval? Okay. So it's Jody and Alice. All right, we've got that. And we need an authorization. We need a, a motion to authorize the chair to sign employee contracts. So we need a motion from so the moved. Floor. Okay. Second. Second. Any discussion on having the chair sign employee contract tracks? The contracts would all be reviewed anyway by the full board. Um, it would not be anything that we'd be in a closet somewhere <laughs> doing that. So um, all those in favor of having the uh, authorizing the chair to sign employee contracts, please say aye. 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 Any opposition? Hearing none, motion carries. Okay, here we go. Next page. Um, a motion to authorize the chair to sign other contracts. And Jody, what would those other contracts be, for example? Sometimes they are with companies like um, the architects that we're working with. We might have a contract with them. Okay. So contracted services. All righty. So authorize the chair to sign other contracts for contracted services. I need a motion. Also, like facilities use. Yeah. Okay. And, and facilities. So moved. So moved. Uh, I need a second. Second. Okay. Second. Um, Jason. Jason. Anyone? Um, any discussion? No discussion. All those in favor? of authorizing the chair to sign other contracts? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Motion carries. All right. Designate. That's been for the warrants, has been me. Okay. All right. Designate the person to sign the warrants. And usually after the board has reviewed them, that is the superintendent of schools here at the Career Center. Um, could we get a motion to that effect to have the superintendent of schools sign the warrants? So moved, Guy. Guy. I need a second. Second, second Jim. Second, Jim. Any discussion? All those in favor of having the superintendent sign warrants, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? Hearing none. Ms. Emerson is our signer for warrants. Um, an alter a designated alternative person to sign the warrants. In many cases, that is the chair of the finance committee. So, um, do is you want to? Do would they have a chair? They don't have one yet. They don't have a chair. Yeah. Oh. So when they organize, um, well, let's wait on that and have that person appointed after the finance committee appoints a chair. Is that acceptable? Yes. Okay. Yes. To be determined. All right. Just as information, there, there's no need to uh, vote on these. Um, the, the location for posting agendas and minutes is the town and city clerk's offices, the front porch forum, the career center website, and the, fa and the career center Facebook page. Does anyone have any other suggestions where we might post agendas or minutes? All right, going forward. Do we agree on the use of Robert's Rules of Order? Thumbs up? Yes. Okay. These are just, uh, um, there is a suggested code of ethics that's in the packet. It's a really very simplistic code of ethics, but it, it covers everything that's needed. Guy never follows it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> true, true confessions, Jim. Thank you. Then, um, Sorry. 
We authorize, <laughs> can I have a motion to authorize the use of that particular code of ethics that we have there? So moved. Okay, so moved. Second. I need a second. Second. All those in favor of you, any discussion? Keep forgetting about discussion. <laughs> Talk among yourselves. Um, but um, any discussion on the use of the code of ethics? No. Um, hearing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. Then we will use the code, that code of ethics. Communication practices. Um, Communication practices. What does that mean? Um, I imagine it is that we we speak as a board. That, that that basically what our what the tenant is is that when anyone has a question and the question might be directed to them as an individual member of the board that that should be shared with the board or any public communication that goes out to any information source like a newspaper or a front porch forum that it we speak as a board. Uh, anyone have any problem with that? No? Okay. I think it's also the reminder that um, you are all in a board group, but if you start a discussion in email, then that's a board conversation, and so you don't want to do that. So um, you'll see that I blind copy the board in my emails every time I remember. <laughs> and so you just reply to me, and that way it's not a board conversation that hasn't been warned. All right, we, everyone, any questions about that? All right, board development opportunities. I extend the invitation to anyone to come visit the Career Center and see what it is that you are supporting and just let me know in advance and we'll schedule that tour. And otherwise, if there's any questions I think Jana can speak to, just reach out and I usually make myself available to support whatever you might need. Everyone, all our new members should have an email address. Hopefully that's working for you at this point and you're receiving my communications. Um, and then we'll do other development at uh, a retreat. Okay. All right. Local and statewide education advocacy responsibilities. And as far as the Career Center is uh, concerned, there are some substantial areas for advocacy, not only at the legislature, but at various um, union or organizational meetings that we can speak about the the career center so um, does anyone have any suggestions what we might add to that list no okay but and my question to the members of the board would you be available either through email or um, direct contact say for example with state legislators to advocate for the career center we're all on board with that? Okay, very good, thank you. Our designated newspaper is the Times Argus. The board packet format is both electronic and paper so that you can get, it pro get the information prior to the meeting and then have a paper copy to record any notes or whatever you might want to write on your information. If you need a paper copy in advance, please let me know and we can mail it to you. All right, and then the health, the voting delegate for statewide health care bargaining is usually the chair of the negotiations committee. So when the negotiations committee has a meeting and organizes and appoints a chair, we will insert that person into this line to be determined. Okay. I believe we have done everything we are supposed to do to be organized, and we now may consider ourselves organized. <laughs> well done. <laughs> wait, wait till tomorrow. <laughs> All righty. Um, so now we will move into our regular agenda, number three, comments for items not on the agenda. Is there any public comment or comment from the board? Um, there's a note about reviewing the agreement and the norms. Do we have those? Do we have the normans in here? Yeah, no. we just went. Those. Yeah. Oh, okay. We'll do that. Okay, so we're set with that. Um, 
Are there any changes to the agenda that anyone would like to see? Anything to add, remove, table? I don't see our student appointee here. Okay. Do we have a student appointee? We do. Yeah. We do, okay. We do, but he took a job that takes him away most Monday nights now. Right. Oh, <laughs> show us, right? Uh, and at Barrytown Ambulance. Right. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. Who is our student appointee? Chase Eastman. Okay. Formidable fellow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I am aware of him. Okay. Very good. Um, so, any public comments? Anyone from the public here in our list of 10 people? Anyone who would like to? All right. Moving forward, um, the consent agenda. There are minutes from February 12th, 2024 that <coughs> need to be approved. Move that we approve the minutes from 2020 from February. February. A second. I'll second. I okay. Any discussion on those be on those uh, minutes? No. All right. So. Um, there's two ways that we can do that. We can either have a, a thumbs up, thumbs down on the minutes, or we could just say that because there is no discussion that they can be considered to be approved. So shall we do a thumbs up on the minutes just to be sure? Okay, very good. Thank you. And then um, approval of the minutes from the annual meeting February 26th, 2024. I'll move approval, guy. Mike, I need a second. Any additions or corrections to those minutes? Did I get a second? I didn't get a second on there. Second. Second. All, second. All right. Um, Jim or Lyman, they're both at the same time. Um, and then um, I need a, a motion to approve those minutes. I mean, uh, any discussion? All right. Um, all those in favor? of approving the minutes of February 26, 2024. All right, Aye. very good. Aye. Aye. Minutes, okay. Now, the appointment plan for the Washington Central at-large position. How are we going to go forward with that? Um, when this happened before, our first year, uh, we had people write in that they were interested in the one year because we can appoint for one year. Okay. Um, so I suggest that we do that and then we give a timeline prior to our April meeting, which we do need to set a date for, um, and then they can show up at that meeting to be interviewed by the board. Okay. Okay. Do you have to post that job somewhere? Yes. Position. I will share it out. Okay. And all of you can share it on Facebook or uh, Front Porch Forum front. or whatever you're on. Yeah. Instagram. Okay, very good. TikTok, do a little video. <laughs> a little a dancing video. We need... <laughs> Sorry, get carried away sometimes. Well, and largely we need to remember it has to be somebody who lives in the Washington Agency, Central right. District. Yes. Um, so, there were lots of write-ins across all of our towns. Nobody got the 60 required write-ins and most of them were not eligible because they didn't live in that town. Right. In Washington Central District. I know a number of us got calls. Oh, you're looking for someone. I said, no, no, we're not looking for anyone from this district. We're looking for Washington Central. Right. Sorry. Okay. Now, committee reports. We have finance and facilities. Any report from finance? Her budget passed. Yes. yes. Yay. So yes. our finance committee was Jill and Floor, who are no longer on the board, and Jim. So Jim's our one member of the finance committee who's still here. We're excited that our budget passed. That's one thing we don't have to worry about. And we're going to be spending a lot of money on architects. <laughs> okay. Anything to add, Michelle? No, I mean, that was really it. We were just talking on our last meeting. We were talking about uh, the new facility, looking over the, that contract, as well as 
um, the Habitat for Humanity contracts. So, we do have, um, per the negotiations, our teacher contracts must go out by April 15th. Mm -hmm. So, if the board is going to review those in advance, then we okay. need to make sure that our meeting takes place before April 15th. Okay. We'll write this down by um, 4.50, 2.024. Okay, very good. Um, any more discussion or reporting about the Finance Committee? Anything else? Jim, do you have anything? Nope. I have a hard out at 7, though, tonight, unfortunately. Okay. We'll, Family event. We'll work on it. Um, facilities Committee, any report from Facilities? Guy, do you want to say something? Well, uh, you know, I don't know. I can't remember who else was on the, uh, you know, the kickoff for the visioning with that Max Collins, but um, it was a pretty exciting time. Um, and, you know, we have the, uh, there's a road, there's a, a road trip coming up this week. So, uh, you know, people are going to, you know, visit you know some of the projects that they have done so uh hard to believe but we're moving forward yeah here's my last offer anyone want to join us on that road trip we're taking a bus up to maine thursday after school and we'll be visiting three centers that were designed by la valley brand singer nice. um, on friday the 22nd and then coming back Is later that night the board going? Not yet. We do, we do have 16 of our staff going. Great. Yeah, it's a great opportunity for a board member. <laughs> what, what, what were the dates again of that, Jody? We leave this Thursday at 3 p.m. from this career center. And we'll yeah. go up to Rockland, Maine and spend the night up there. And then we will be back late Friday. So we're squishing oh. in three centers in in the day Friday. Cool. Coach, we'll bus. see. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll look for an email from you, maybe. Maybe, yeah. Coach, Coach bus. Coach bus. Coach yep. bus. Coach bus. Ooh, style. Okay. All right. Please do. Please, if you are interested, let Jody know. Thank you very much. Um, now, kickoff envisioning with Truex Cullen. That's what Guy was just talking about. Okay, so that's yeah. that's the road trip. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and the meeting we had last week on Tuesday, which we did record that, and you had it in one of your recent emails, and it is, if it's not already there, it will be in the facilities. No, it's committee. there. I saw, I watched it today. Perfect. Okay. All right. Next is program quality. Guy oh, Guy, I'm sorry. So, sorry. Uh, Jody, uh, I'm trying to remember. I, I thought there was a discussion about with the, with the contract about hourly rate versus flat rate. And did that get settled? Um, there were questions about that, and they did give us some clarity about that both prior to the last facilities meeting before we signed the contract and then again um, in that meeting, the kickoff meeting. And, and what was the final <laughs> final answer? Uh, of course you're asking that. It, it, was a, it was a combination based on one, what they could say definitively uh, how long it was going to take. There were things like the site. the site selection could is hourly because they it don't depends know how, many, on how sites. many sites we're going to ask them to look at. Okay, I just I I, I couldn't remember. Thank you for doing. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Now moving forward, any more oh, before we go? Any more facilities concerns, questions, information? Um, one of the things that the facilities committee was also looking at prior to the shift in the board is a space for a welding program. We're looking to open a welding program okay. for next year. We did hire a teacher on board to start developing that program. And the space that we identified that we wanted was the, is currently the maintenance stop shop for BUUSD. 
it was the old tech ed classroom. And so there was some outreach. I did a formal request to the BUUSD superintendent, and he um, declined. Okay. And at that time, Sonia was representing Barry for us, and so she asked some questions, and I don't know if she ever got, uh, I, didn't, I was not copied on a response, so okay. I'm not sure if she got one. Um, we would still like that space. Project WorkSafe came in, WorkSafe, sorry, came in on Friday and said that it is indeed viable for a 16 mm -hmm. student program. Um, and they're going to give us the information as to how we need to upgrade it to make sure that we can put the welding program in there. But we need the AOE will not approve the program if we don't have permission to use the space, obviously. Okay, right. So it's one of the many steps to opening the program that we need to do. It's great that it's viable. Yes. Well, it's great for us, maybe not for Barry. All right. Do you guys like the lights on in here now? Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Guy, do you think we should get together and approach Mr. Hennessy about that? You well, and I? That Alice? Yeah. I didn't, I didn't hear you, Alice. Um, do you think that you and I should get together and approach Mr. Hennessy about using the maintenance shop for the welding program? We're not sure. There was no substantive answer as to why he declined um, the use of that facility for the welding program. <laughs> he declined it. Uh, I would be more, I'd be more than happy to. I mean, I've, I've got some uh, some opinions on it, but I'll keep them quiet right now. Okay. Do we have any alternative spaces? That we could say you could use this for your facility thing. Um, we did offer up one of the storage sheds, mm -hmm. but it's not heated, and so it may not be. We also offered to allow because our programs currently are morning only, mm -hmm. to allow the maintenance staff to be able to use some of our tools and equipment in any of the programs, yeah. and also to seek the support of students in making nice. those repairs that they needed to That's during the program day. That's a good offer. Okay. Do you have a copy of that letter? I will forward Would that you to forward you. that to yeah. me? Yeah. All right. Guy, you and I can talk about that and see whether or not we need to um, appeal to a higher source. A sure, better would, would love. a better angel. Okay. Very good. It may be a board to board yeah. situation yeah. at this point. Um, so you may want I don't want you to put you in a place of conflict of interest. So we may want to also see if anyone else on facilities, Josh, I know that puts you in a weird space since you're the one other person right now, um, but you might want to be involved in that conversation. So because Alice is a, appointed from the BUSD, okay. so it's a challenging space. Yeah, I understand. I can, uh, I'm, uh, if there's a conversation, if I need to be involved with the conversation, that'd be great. And I'm happy to touch base with uh, folks beforehand to get a little more background info and that kind of yeah. thing before I just sit there wide-eyed. Right, <laughs> that, that, that's probably really important. Yeah. I'll send both Alice and Josh those okay. emails from before. Okay, very good. That will give us some good background information, Mr. Sevitz. All righty. Can we move forward now from facilities? Are we ready to move on? All right. Program quality. The CLNA presentation. Does everyone have this packet? What's your thought? Why don't you guys talk about it? Should we go through it or should we I don't do it next in April? I think we could do it. I mean, I don't think it's that late. I think we can do it and adjourn on time. You think? Jody, what's your? I think we could too. I'm going to need to do it on my other computer. Box. All right. Just a moment. All right. We're getting set up here so we can share a screen and everybody can see talk about what what's going on. Does for a little bit? Um, sure. Go ahead. No, I have to. <laughs> Um, well, 
program quality looks at the different programs and looks at the standards in order to achieve at a, at a high level, um, understand what the level of satisfaction is of the attendees in the programs, their families, uh, future plans and goals, how we bring other students in to the Career Center, possibly earlier on than they currently may be, to see if we can grow the, the interest um, of those who are interested in the programs that the Career Center offers because we have a huge waiting list and we reject people and so we try to design programs of a high quality with a tremendous amount of certification offered and college credits and dual enrollment credits for, for the work that, that happens at the Career Center. So we look at all of those things and we also look at how the different constituents who are involved in making this whole program work so well how we all work together and and the CLNA was a comprehensive local needs assessment in order to be able to receive uh, funding from from Perkins which we do every how many years three two. years every two years we have to do that so it's really a deep dive into how the Career Center is working and how um, effective the program has been for the different students within the different programs. Anything else you'd like to add? I think you did a bang up job. Anybody? I'm sure I was blathering. That's perfect. Perfect blather. Can everyone see the presentation? Great. So thank you for that introduction, Janet. Oh. Yes, every two years, uh, all career and technology education facilities have to do a comprehensive local needs assessment, and that's across the United States, and that is for our Perkins funding. And for us, we get about 260, 270,000 each year allocated of Perkins funds, um, as long as we're doing this and we're moving forward. This year, we actually got a little over 300,000 because they reallocated some unused funds from last year. And so, this is really for the career centers, what drives our strategic planning and our action planning. So you'll see why we're moving towards a new center, for example, in some of this work. So I try to always make sure that we incorporate our vision as a district and a center in, and so I've, I've done that. And as you can imagine, we're working to prepare students for career and college and the diverse society and workforce that they're gonna be entering. And we have some very specific programs in which they're doing that. For the comprehensive local needs assessment, there are six required components of our study. And so we look at what's called accountability data, some performance data. You might have seen uh, that information that I shared when I received it from the state. We look at how our programs align to the labor market information that's available to us. We analyze the size, scope, and quality of each program with and the um, programs of study with some documents that the Vermont Agency of Education provides for us to do this. And we analyze some of our strategies for recruiting, retaining, and training our staff. Um, many of you who've been here for a few years will know that, for instance, we had difficulty filling a position in plumbing and heating. And so we did so with a lab assistant who got an emergency license and a contracted worker from BHB. So we still have that going forward for the rest of this year. We are not gonna be able to get that instructor and emergency license again next year. So we are looking again for a plumbing teacher. But right now we have um, Pete from BHB who joins us three days a week and that's a contracted service. And then we have the, the lab assistant who stepped up and took that emergency license opportunity and has been instructing the class throughout the rest of the time. And so it's been a great partnership and unfortunately due to licensing regulations we can't continue that but we're hoping that we can figure out something moving forward to keep that program open and then um, the last thing that we look at is our progress toward implementation of equal access to high quality cte programs for all students and most of you have heard the mantra over and over again that last year we had 408 students applied and we accepted 208 so 
we're looking for ways to expand so that we can take in the students that are interested. Um, this, this chart that's in front of you now is a comparison of our accountability data that comes from the state. We submit a report every year, just like all, all of our Sydney schools do, but ours is very specific to some CTE related things along with the, how many of our students graduate in four years, for example. Um, one of the pride and joy of CTE is that the majority of students do graduate in four years. Um, you can see that our negotiated target, well, that'll be on the next one, but our negotiated target was about 96% and we hit that last year. Um, and that's something that when I've spoken with folks in the legislature, they're really proud of and they want to see all high schools in Vermont hitting that kind of target. Um, one of the things that I would kind of warn you about this is that I'm trying to show some growth from FY21 20 to 22 and then 22 to 23 and then overall. But these are different cohorts of students and I'm not sure that that's a valid um, way to look at the data. I took this um, template from another center and decided to try it. And I would love your feedback at some point as to whether or not that's something you wanna see. I mean, if we look at the academic proficiency in science, it looks like, wow, we've done a great job, but that might not be us. It might be all of your sending schools that you represent uh, because typically we get 24 students here for their ninth or 10th grade year, but the majority of students are here in their junior and senior year. Mm -hmm. So we might not be able to take re <laughs> responsibility for some of those pieces. Um, in the last two rounds of CLNA, the literacy and the math were scores from Work Keys, which is um, a career readiness assessment that does literacy, uh, reading, writing, and math. So you will see that those are coming from the Work Keys and not from your sending schools uh, test, whatever it is that they're doing now, or students that they have to take. Any questions? Before I move on and always feel free to raise your hand or interrupt as well. So then I went and looked at because the last time we did this was in FY21, we looked at the FY22 data specifically so that you could compare it with the FY23 and if you look the yellow areas are areas that we just need to look at and try to figure out maybe what's going on. A gold area is something that I must include in my CLNA plan, which is my four-year plan and my action plan, my uh, Perkins application, so any of those things. Um, blue lets you know that that's a requirement for that program. So those are industry-recognized credentials. Some of our programs, that's required. Some of them, they can choose either industry-recognized credentials or college credits. Some of them have to do college credits, so you can see that in there as well. One of the things that I noted with the program quality group earlier, we, we met, we just didn't take action on anything, um, is that the teal piece was, we don't have enough information in those areas. And it's, for me, it's a little shocking because I look at building trades, electrical and medical professions, and I know it's not zero. So I need to do some research as to why there's no data there for those three programs. Um, and we need to make sure we, we collect it. I do know that there are students in the field and usually this is from our, we reach out to grads, recent grads and find out what are they doing now, where'd they go? And it could be that's related college, it could be military, it could be into the job. Some of the really exciting things about this um, FY23 data is I was told by the state person that represents CTE, Ruth Durkee, that we are the top school the top CTE when it comes to students attaining tier two industry recognized credentials and college credits. So not only did we highly exceed our, our negotiated target, uh, but we are above everyone else in the state. So I'm really super proud of that and I hope you are too. The program size, scope and quality is a document that asks teachers to look at a variety of different areas and to recognize whether we're meeting our goals there. And so you'll see that the minimum quality quantity of students, two programs did not achieve that, and this is their second year. 
So that includes emergency services too and design and fabrication. And so they need to have eight students in each program to move forward next year. Um, emergency services too, we're looking forward to a WCAX interview and story this week. So we're hoping that that will help us. And I know Carl is on screen and may have something to add, but he and his students have been also doing a little bit of a road show at any place that has an emergency services program where students get an EMT certificate, because once they get that, they can move into our EMS2 program. That's a paramedicine program with uh, Vermont State University. It's the only in the country, we believe. Right, Carl? I know he's there. It's yes, sorry, I had to find the mute button. <laughs> yes, that's, as far as we know from our research, we're definitely the only second year program in the state, but and and New England, but yeah, across the country at this level where we're, you know, having high school seniors start their paramedicine program and stuff and getting two thirds of the way through it, three quarters of the way through it, actually, by the time they graduate high school. Great. It's phenomenal, and every student in that program is working actively or volunteering in an emergency services program locally. So you might see them if you're in Barrytown and they're out and about, or uh, Waterbury, you know, Northfield and Randolph, and, and there may be a couple other places where they're supporting. So it's phenomenal to know that these kids are out, they're on the ambulances working, and they're coming into school every day, and they're also going to the PTC program every Thursday with Carl, and they're there with the PTSU folks. Did you say what our numbers currently are? That we have four in there. We, okay, we, we accepted four. seven, and mm -hmm. four came. Okay. So that's that's also a, something we need to think about. Uh, um, we, can, we can't exceed what we expect to have in the program, like what we can, if it's a program where we can have 16, we can't accept more than 16 right. kids, so we start a wait list. Um, but in this, there were two programs this year that lost a number of students who had said they were coming and then didn't after the summer. Um, so that's an area where we are doing a little work. Can the kids go from emergency services one to two in our program? Yes. And do we have a, a full class of ones this year? We have of juniors. A, it, this year was a smaller group. Um, in that class and a couple of them are seniors. I think we have seven in that class right now. Um, and it's the first time it's been that low in a while. Next year, we have a much bigger group of kids based on our first round of application status. And the road show that Carl and his kids did, they did get three applicants for a second round from that. Oh, so we're hopeful. Um, design and fabrication, I think it's, we've gotten a lot of feedback about, that's our stone arts program. Mm -hmm. And folks don't know that from the title. And a lot of the tours don't visit there. So we need to really do a little more work on marketing that. So we may pause that program for the year and look at how we can market it better. And will the instructors be on hold for a year and come back? We'll probably have to talk about them. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, when we look at the, the side scope and quality by program, we see a positive trend line in our enrollment overall at, at the center. Um, a slight increase in some non-traditional genders in the heavy trades, especially in the past, you might have walked through and toured and seen like one female student in automotive, for example, um, and, and that has gone up. Um, and the skills emphasis in exploratory, shout out to Steph, one of our exploratory teachers, that had some really great highlights in it, and we would like to extend that across the center. Um, some areas of growth, obviously the number of students we turn away is disheartening and it impacts them. Um, and so we'd like to be able to accept more students. We need to figure out how to overcome the barriers to students enrolling or being interested in design and fabrication. And there is also, um, because of the tuition formula, there's a perceived competition between us and our sending schools, if, especially if they're experiencing declining enrollment. And so how do we overcome that? And if you've been following, one of the things that the CTE directors have been working towards is a non-competitive funding formula. And so I've been at the legislature, especially in the Senate uh, Education Committee several times already this school year, um, advocating for that. Did you have something? I need a pen, I have a tip. Sorry. Okay. 
the other thing that we did is look at program of study analysis. I don't have a pen, but with this one. Doing a little. I have to break into Carl's room and go get some tweezers or something. Um, our teachers looked at 89 different components. This is a really short list of what some of those things were in each CTE program. So we looked at standards, we looked at student assessment, we looked at engaging instruction, access and equity, work-based learning, all sorts of different pieces. I think it just went backwards. Nope. So some celebrations of that is that we um, have improved in some areas. The amount of work that my instructors do for this process is phenomenal, and I'm really proud of that. We can highlight medical professions in this one. Um, they've done a really good job of taking those areas where they were unmet to fully met. And a couple of our programs were kind of on that list for labor, labor market industry um, as they didn't, maybe weren't high skill, high wage. <laughs> Sorry, they're dealing with a tick issue here. So we're trying to get rid of it. Um, so baking and culinary and cosmetology. Uh, added some pieces to meet those high scale, high wage, high demand requirements of the state so that we can maintain those programs. And then there are ways that we can grow. We can strengthen our partnerships with the industry. We can employ the strategies that have been used in medical professions for the equity pieces and curriculum, looking at curriculum across all of our programs. We can improve access potentially with uh, transportation, um, which could be a barrier to some, and look at opportunities to collaborate with our Sunday schools to see if there's a way to provide space and programming for the students that we're currently turning away. And we are hoping to implement portfolios across all of our programs. Everyone's dabbled in it, not everyone does it. Our survey data is phenomenal. If you haven't gotten a chance to look at the CLNA um, data and check out the surveys, it's pretty amazing. It's, my favorite thing is that we had 131 students out of 186 currently enrolled that completed that survey. So that is phenomenal, a huge group of students. Um, we see from our industry folks that employability skills are high from our students. Many of our students have said that the atmosphere here at the Career Center is one that they really appreciate and they don't want to go back to their sending schools. There are some concerns in our feedback from faculty and staff around some negativity. And so even though the pie charts are generally positive, one of the things that we were talking about in program quality earlier is there's a large amount of neutral that we could move. Um, the concerns and comments are the area that's not quite as positive in the faculty staff one. Um, there are some concerns in the student feedback around safety and program for some. And, and the students, when they were looking at this leadership team of students, they said that they noticed that not that many students actually put comments, but the ones that did said something positive and then they followed it with something they were concerned about. And those concerns were safety and program or other students vaping in the center. We saw across a lot of the parent surveys, there was a one and some of the students, a one for a full day with academics, so they didn't have to take that bus ride back and then attend a class at their sending school. We have a need to strengthen our math skills here and improve that. And then we have concerns about from some of the survey data, there are people who did not apply to come here because they felt like they couldn't access college in the future. And so I feel like we have some work to do to let them know that they can start college while they're here in many cases. So I'm just gonna give you a minute to look at some of these pie charts. This one down here was the one where Jenna was noting that we could really move the needle on that neutral group into the positive, where CDCC has a positive faculty and staff culture. We could work to move that. And I'm hopeful that this road trip on 
Thursday, Friday will help. One of the things we talk about is our professional development because Perkins can be used for professional development purposes. And so I've basically included all of the trainings that we've done while I've been here. This is my third year here. Um, and then we're moving forward in the fall with the college writing program. We're gonna work on some proficiency based instruction and scoring because we recognize that not everyone across the center, all of our staff have the same understanding of what it means and we're going to build our capacity there and then we're, one of the things to look at that faculty and staff culture is to look at some professional development around a psychologically safe environment one of the things we have to talk about is how we are moving towards equity and access so we do have an equity scholar in residence this is his first full year with us and I think his name is Life, and he is actually on the Harwood board as well. Um, he has been a phenomenal addition and has collaborated with many uh, program instructors in teaching different pieces that relate to their program. He um, taught a, a few of the programs some um, information about OSHA and how it was developed in Barrie. So he's added a little global citizenship there, um, brought in some excellent guests to support some you might have seen in the newsletter today. And I think my new board members probably need to get on that newsletter oh, mailing list. Sorry. Um, so mostly it's about when, when we bring students in and what they're doing. So you see our admissions process is highly um, part of this calendar of activities that we do. Something that we're really excited about is May uh, 8th is our trades fair this year. We hold that outside weather permitting. Um, it's basically a career fair or job fair for a bunch of our industry partners. Our students get to show off the work that they're doing and we're going to have signing day for first and second round acceptances. So we're gonna give the kids a hat and, and they sign in for next year. So we're hoping that builds some of their excitement. Also in our CLNA meeting last week, which was on the labor market, we realized that Rosie's Girls, which is a Vermont Works for Women activity, that they can build new um, Rosie Girls programs. And so we can build one that's related to our design and fabrication program, which I did not know until last week. Pretty cool. You might have already seen these student survey responses. They were the ones that we included in our annual report. So we just we added them to this presentation. Overall, super positive um, about safety in the center, how people are treated with respect, um, comfort level, use of equipment, engagement, et cetera. And this is in the board packet, so you can take a look at it there. I send out a um, survey to any to our recruitment and mailing group and to all of our Sunday school principals to send to their kids and ask them to fill out if they were not attending CBCC or another CTE, why aren't they? And so the majority of responses, and there were only 34, so it's not really a good um, survey sample size, but they were afraid they wouldn't meet graduation requirements at their Sunday schools. They didn't want to be away from their friends, which was some of the reasons that some of our students who had applied last year did not end up coming with us. Um, one student was very clear in every answer that the dress code did not work for them. <laughs> and um, some of them said that we just didn't have the right programming for them yet. Parents ask the question. Yeah, go ahead. What is the dress code? Um, it's safety. Safety first, safety first yes. yes. So it depends on the program, but uh, most almost all of them are close to his shoes and sleeps right on, and often you don't get to wear skirts or dresses in the program so you get caught in the equipment right so it depends so we have an overall uh center-wide dress code and then it varies a little bit by program but for the most part it's pants a uh, short sleeve shirt or long sleeve shirt um but no tank tops right so kind of what you would expect in right. the industry. So, so it's not that you're requiring everybody to wear a sears robot brown no nope. uh, khakis. Khakis. No, yes. they don't. It's not a uniform per right. se. Although some programs do have like scrubs, right? So they might have medical scrubs or 
and students don't wear those every day, but yeah. So I don't think that that's uh, outrageous. <laughs> Me either. Thank you. Yes. Uh -huh. um, again, the parent responses are largely positive. There's one there where we might be able to move the needle a little bit, and that's the, I believe CBCC gives my child something valuable that they otherwise wouldn't have an opportunity to do or learn in high school. Um, so we might be able to help them understand some of the things that we do that are different. Yeah. Last week was our last CLNA committee meeting. Um, thank you, Jana and Guy, for serving on that committee. Um, basically, we were looking at the labor market needs and recognizing that we we definitely need to add a pre-tech foundations to help build the skills for students who are applying as eighth graders and want to get in as ninth grade students. Um, this would help them. We want to expand our exploratory program. We get probably double the applicants of what we can take in that program. Is that right, Steph? Yeah. Um, we're looking at developing additional programming. Welding would be for next year, hopefully. Uh, child care for the year after and business management, potentially either uh, year after next or the following year. We're looking, as you know, to expand program space and extend and or extend our hours of use in existing spaces. We need to improve that marketing for design and fabrication if we're going to retain it in the future. And our adult programming has been limited this year. Um, in the past, we've done a lot of, kind of been doing the healthcare type of um, pieces and we lost our LNA instructor this fall. And so we haven't been able to fill that position. So we have our first um, adult ed phlebotomy course is happening this That's semester, uh, but it's a lot less. We used to have LNA courses running almost year round. And so we don't have that this year. Some additional considerations, we need to continue our industry partnership and it would be great to hold mock interviews with students to grow soft skills across all our programs. A few of them do it now. Thinking about other recruitment opportunities, maybe summer camp, which I'm told we did before COVID. Um, collaborate with Vermont Works for Women to build that uh, design and fabrication for these girls and um, providing additional training that is program specific across all of our programs so that we meet the needs um, of our industry folks based on our survey responses. And then when I looked at this, I looked at the themes from our analysis and, and you can see that those are probably themes that everyone has across all of our sending boards. If you need, we need to communicate more. We'd love to see more folks at our board meetings. Um, we'd like to know how to get feedback from folks that are not part of the board. Um, we're always looking at our data and assessment and trying to learn and grow from that. For us, we're focusing on those employability and universal skills. It might be transferable skills that are sending schools. Looking to develop those partnerships with industry, uh, continuing to develop our teachers. Anyone who's new to CTE, our teachers are generally coming from industry. They tend not to be teacher trained. And so they come in and they start teaching in their first year and also start taking courses in a four year apprenticeship model. And so it is a huge and heavy lift for anyone who's new to CTE because they're teaching first time ever and they're taking college courses to get that licensure. So it's a lot of time and energy from them for those first four years. Um, we're looking at program expansion and space needs and then safety and supporting our students. And each one of those themes is broken down into a couple of bullet points throughout the rest of this. I'm not gonna take the time right now to go through each one of them but you do have this um, information. And if there's something that comes up for you around this, you can certainly reach out and or take it up in the committees that you might be in. Well done. And this is online on our board page, and it's also in the CLNA folder. So it's, there's two places um, you should be able to find it. Thank you. Any questions, concerns, comments? 
Thank you very much. We appreciate the information. Guy? I may have to ask Jim for permission to speak, but uh, I'm going to speak anyway. Um, Jody, you, you really thank you for allowing us to you know, sit in on that particular process. I'm just speaking for myself, but I know Janet you know, feels the same way. Uh, the, the great thing for me was to experience other collaborators that are part of the decision making process, which was really, you know, really thing. You know, an aha moment for me was, uh, you know, since we have a governing board, and I, I think I've said this before, you know, I, I think the, you know, we, we miss the participation of the RAP board members who are local you know, potential mm -hmm. employers and stuff. And while we had some at, at those meetings, uh, you know, it would have been nice to have more. Uh, but you did a marvelous job of, you know, putting this together. And I really appreciate that. I wanted to thank you. The other thing I wanted to say is, especially for the new board members, if you haven't heard the classes at the Career Center, uh, you need to take a few minutes to do that. You will be absolutely amazed. You'll be doing cartwheels by the time you leave. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what these kids are doing is just, you know, over the top. Uh, and I can't say enough about it. I, I you know, there, there's still, a, I think, a, a little bit of a stigma and a little bit of misunderstanding. And the more you understand it, the more you see it, uh, you will be wowed. So. Guy, I just want to say really quickly, <clears throat> um, thank you for that invite. And um, I am new to this board. I was on the RTCC board um, back in uh, 2009 and 2010 when I was uh, in when I lived in Randolph. Um, and so, although I have not seen CVCC students in action. Uh, I have I, I, this. I'm not new to CTE, um, so thank you very much. Thank you all. Any any other further discussion comments? All right, moving forward, superintendent's report. You have a report for us. It was in your packet. <laughs> yes. Yep. Anything else you would, you would want to add uh, or highlight? Let's see. Um, I think I've already I talked about the budget already. Yep. Um, I've told you emergency services. We're getting interviewed on Wednesday morning, so I'll let you know as soon as I know anything from WCAX on when to look for that. Um, Poetry Out Loud. Our digital media arts students did the live stream for that, and then um, two of our alumni were able to finish off that day. So our students are here from 8.30 to 12.30, so they did that portion, and then some alumni stepped in and did the rest of that day. So if you see that video, that was our students or alumni, so our former students. We did um, close out our round one application process, and so students got notified on Friday afternoon if they were accepted for next year. Our second round um, ap applications closed the same day. So we, we have 180 students that we accepted and about 25 students who were put on wait lists. And second round closed with 75 new applications. And we had, uh, gosh, 291, I think, first round. So we are rapidly approaching that 400 um, number that we had last year and probably going to exceed it with third round. As you see, we wrapped up our comprehensive local needs assessment. So you got that presentation and the next step will be for me to put together um, the report that goes into the, the grant system and um, develop that four year plan, which I will share with you before I submit. And then I also already shared that I've been working with the legislature and the CTE directors. Um, apparently when you become a member of the executive committee and it doesn't work here yet, but of the Vermont Association of the CTE Directors. When you become the secretary, you then move to vice president, and then once you're vice president, you then move to president. So next uh -huh. year, apparently, I'm president. Oh, God. So more yeah, to come sure. on that and lots more advocacy oh, ahead, God. for sure. Uh -huh. 
is there anything that we as board members could or should be doing in regard to that advocacy for the the financing um, so really right now what the CTE directors are advocating is that we hold on the financing we want it to be a non-competitive funding formula and the block grant that the interim secretary proposed did not do that it, it basically just took the money straight from the ed fund to us right now we have a complicated right combination of some of it comes from the ed fund some of it we bill back for tuition but it still comes off the top of what you get for those students the six semester average of students so for instance i think u32 is sending us like 50 kids next year and oh, wow. last year it was 34 so your six semester average is going to help you another community i think berries has gone down and so they sent us 75 this year and there there's less next year then that six semester average is not going to be so helpful for them so that's we're trying to get away from that piece but also not impact our sending schools in the same way that we have so it's not competitive and uh, the aoe had partnered with apa which i cannot pronounce their name so i'm not going to but that's the group that did a study last year on cte governance and funding in vermont and so the aoe hired them to model a funding formula they're gonna put forth a recommendation in april and our recommendation is to wait for that recommendation okay. instead of doing something in the interim that doesn't seem like it's going to be helpful okay so that's if you can advocate for that as well i will always share our letters and stamps and then you can choose to share that out with uh, folks on that represent you if you wish okay all righty very good that's it thank you ma'am um accounts payable can we pay the bills So far, <laughs> we have a lot of unfilled positions, unfortunately. Um, we have the STEM coordinator and the, the literacy interventionist. Yeah. So um, we have some extra funds as a result of that. Okay, so we're good. All yeah. righty, okay. Um, staffing and personnel contracts, letters of intent, and art riffs. We'll talk about that in executive session. Okay, all righty, so we'll move that to executive session. Sesh. Did anyone have questions on the warrants that I attached to that email? Okay. Jody, I just had a, a quick question. Yeah, I, I don't know if I've noticed this before, but I, I saw the word blanket a lot. What does that actually mean? Say again. Uh, blanket. Blanket? Yeah. In the warrant? Yeah. Yeah, maybe I'm just dreaming, but. Michelle? Maybe Ted, it's just not you just got back? It's likely, I, I'll go back and review this to verify, but it's likely a blanket PO, meaning it's a PO that's um, encumbered for a non specific amount, say $1,000 to one vendor, and is drawn down. That's probably what a blanket, that's what a blanket PO is. Yeah. Right. Was okay. Abishan one of those or RK Miles? Because that, those were we have open accounts, and so our building trades instructor has been off to RK Miles quite frequently to get the stuff we need for the mobile home renovation, for example. Yeah, I just don't remember seeing it that often. So I, maybe I maybe I was paying more attention this time. I think we are using it more. Yeah, and we also have a new. Uh, we did a, a change in the department. Um, back in december so january was official where rather than kelly being our accounts payable it's now Lori morvan um and so she might just be entering things a little bit differently thank you okay very good um 4.9 superintendent evaluation we're going to do that in executive <coughs> session we'll move that to executive session okay very good and um, future agenda items are board development and goal setting, placement into the workforce from programs. Uh, will the current process, the co-op coordinator will explain that to us. And uh, program presentations throughout the year, which are always very interesting to see those. And uh, that's where we are. Anything else for a future agenda item? 
that we might that the board might need to discuss. All right, hearing none, we'll move forward. Um, we need to um, reflection and summary of meeting next steps. Anyone have any reflections on the meeting? Any suggestions? Um, if you have any criticism, you have to sing them. We do need that <laughs> April board meeting date. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, so we need the April. April eighth is um, Solar Day, Lunar e Eclipse Day. So there will be. Um, much activity on that day. That also is the day of our board meeting. Can we do the next week? We need to, th but we have to be in, be we have to have everything done before the 15th. Right. We have to have our board meeting before the 15th. Oh, couldn't be on the 15th. The April meeting. The 11th? The 1st. April Fools? <laughs> no yeah. kidding. Yeah, let's do April Fools then. Yeah, that that it. probably might be better to do in do it in front. Do April first. Okay. Be April one. So we'll have to warn that prior to that and remind everybody that our meeting and it'll be here mm -hmm. in this room. Okay. Or online. Does that work for everybody? Because. Was somebody the first Monday, which is why we changed year two from year one? Weren't we the first Monday the first year? We were, were but then we wanted to get finance ahead of it. So we put okay. finance and facilities on the first Tuesday, and then we put board our board on the second right. Monday. So it wasn't yep. a board council. Yeah. No. The only Monday board meetings are Jason's and Cabot. So will an April 1st, Jason, will, a, will an April 1st uh, board meeting impact you in any way? No, I think that'll work. Okay. Does that mean that we're going to have um, a committee meeting at 4 o'clock that day? Is everything going to be backed up since we won't be able to do it on our... Yeah. 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 Is that all right? It's fine with me. Yeah. Five o'clock though, right? Yeah, it's five o'clock. So yeah. pro program will meet at uh, at five. Right. I'll be online. Right, I'll okay. so be in Pennsylvania. Okay. You'll be teaching. Okay, so the April meeting will be April first at six o'clock for the board. Program quality will meet at five o'clock here in room one twenty seven. We need to move into um, executive session for personnel. And the statement is we're, we need to vote to move into executive session in order to discuss personnel because prior knowledge of the events could disrupt Whatever. Yes, and it's personnel, so we can't right. discuss that. Right. So we'll do that. But but the statement for moving into a personnel executive session is be, owing to the fact that prior knowledge of any events would um, disrupt the order of the, the of the business. All right. So we're voting to move into. I need a motion to move into executive session. So moved. By Jana, second. Second. By Lyman. All those in favor of moving into executive session? Aye. 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 Any, any opposed? No? All right. So it sounds like a motion to adjourn happened in the so, breakout room. Yeah. Because okay. we were supposed to reconvene and go into the big room and then? Yeah. yeah. So thank you, Orca. It looks like we're adjourned.